So, the current project that I got laid out in front of me is something I've been wanting to do for a while, which is putting a radio in the Kubota tractor. So, the Kubotas come already pre-wired, the slots ins already there. Everything, including the antenna, is usually installed, whether it's an RTV, utility vehicle, to a BX series, or whatever else Kubotas. So all we really need, from everything I've read online, is the adapter to the 9-pin series that goes to the Kubota plugs that are already sitting in your tractor. And it's right on available on Amazon. I'll attach a link below so you can just click on it and go. And that's one part. The other part is just a decent radio. So uh, I wanted something that's Bluetooth that can connect to my phone that I can answer calls with and do everything right there. And even Siri connects to this. So this is a Jensen radio. It's the same one that's in the, or very similar to the ones that are already in existing kits or Kubota. But instead of the 80, 90, 100 or whatever dollar kits, this combined with this was $55 currently on Amazon, it might vary a little bit, but for 55 bucks, you can get yourself a radio. So all you need is the adapter kit for the nine pin to Kubota style and the radio. The radio has two components. It's a mounting bracket that should come with it. That you snap in, you bend the tabs that are around it into place. And we'll do that portion later in the video. And it's got its own harness that plugs in the back of the radio. And we just have to be able to splice the two together so we can go from the radio to the Kubota wiring. Pretty straightforward. All you really need, which thanks to my superfluous of <laughs> tractor projects, is some 22 gauge or thereabouts, 18 to 22 gauge butt splice connectors. So these are the marine grade waterproof once they've done crimp connectors. So put them together. All we need to do just follow the directions that came with the adapter. And it tells us basically what wires go to what. So starting off with the most basic, the ground is the black wire on this. And on the stereo, that is also the black. So all we have to do is connect black to black. They must have been playing on somebody doing some funky electrical because the length on the radio kit is insanely long. So. If you do the marine gain connectors, they make a special tool that actually crimps those so it gets the proper crimp. Welcome to. Always give them a little spin. They're good to go. Done. Solid crimp connecting. We're gonna trim this down a little bit because you don't need an inch of wire. So typically, you want enough to go to the center of that crimp, but it's just about a quarter of an inch of wire sticking past. And I should have brought my better snips. But these are what I got. Ah. <laughs> this thing's done a few different projects, including so electrical and it's got some wire I probably shouldn't have cut it. So black to black. Done. And I like to come in the middle in case they're just long enough to get that center portion. And crimp basically the full length across the metal and it's good to go. If I had my heat gun in here, that's what I'd be using next, but it's storming outside and I'm not running to the barn. So we are really quickly doing it the old fashioned way. And the nice things about these main grains is you can literally watch the bubbles go through as the sheet shrinks and watch the bubbles work right out as the material inside that seals seals. And when she's done, she's done. Beautiful. Waterproof connection. You can get the self-soldering ones, honestly, I've used these for years. I think the oldest one I had is going 15 years old in a truck and it still works great and I wired the entire truck that way. So, soldering is great. This is just as good in my book for what I'm doing. So, we're done our ground, black to black. The next one is the yellow wire on this, on the Kubota side, which goes to the yellow on the stereo. 
Simple enough. So apparently that is power, battery power. And it's already set up with an inline 10 amp fuse. I'm gonna leave it. Even though the Kubota is probably already fused, if I splice it and shorten it, the harness is gonna come together and I'd rather keep everything the same length. We get the power. Next one on the line is the turn on, basically the ignition switch connected wire, and that's the red one on the Kubota side. And on the other side, it is also red. Simple enough. Red to red. Next one is the speaker wire. First one's white on the Kubota side to white on the stereo side. speaker wire down the white one done next speaker is the left negative oh there's positive and negatives that's neat green on the Kubota side and it's to the white black stripe on the radio which we were just talking about the only other white one nice all right so the left hand speaker is done now on the right hand speaker we have the orange wire on the Kubota side. Ooh, a little warm there on that sealer. All right, orange wire, Kubota, to gray wire. There's two gray. Let me guess there's a gray and a black. <laughs> Not so damn lucky. Damn lucky. Ah, oh, there's a gray and black, nice. So same deal, the one with the black is a negative. So I want just the solid gray with the orange. Last one is blue on the Kubota side to the gray black stripe. Just grab the gray black, done. Don't make a good twist. heat shrink the only two that were unused was the blue that actually is already taped off so I'm assuming they didn't want you to use it and the two purple so figure that one out I don't know what they're for but that's fine on the tractor side what we have left is to pop off the mounting unit mount that to the actual tractor and connect it on this end of things there is an action antenna plug and that i gotta figure out if it's still there or broke off the cab of my tractor got broken before and the owner modified a little bit but i am super excited to get this going so we'll pick up with being in the tractor 
and doing our $55 Kubota Radio Series Part 2 in a moment. So I'll pick up then. Yeah, so uh, Roger, let's see if he's spinning over here. You see the little man? Hey, you in there? Hey, yeah. bud. So Roger and I are getting ready for a uh, blizzard cleanup day. So what that means is we get to move, blow snow, and shovel snow for the next few hours. So what we did last night was take and made this pigtail harness that adapts from the radio to the Kubota tractor. And what we have to do in here today is just install the radio. So supposedly everything is right here behind this panel. I popped and just barely opened it before and it was full of a mouse nest. So let's see how bad that actually is. Or actually, I shouldn't say I opened it. Roger popped it open one day, messing around with things. So let's just pop that guy out. And let's open that door for a moment. Right. <clears throat> Have a plethora of frisbees because one of the farms we rent is right next to a frisbee golf course. So, let's close the door. Uh, <laughs> you're tired? So, buddy, buddy, we're doing a video. Can you hold still for just five seconds? So, from when I looked at this earlier, there's no wrong upside, downside. It's completely a square mounting flange. So, once you install it into the slot, all we have to do to retain it has been couple of these metal clips over and that keeps this mounting flange mounted. Nice. Simple. So we got two, might as well do two on the top just in case. We get some bouncy fields, I don't want this thing falling out. Put two on the top. Nice. Top's gonna take a load. Let's plug our harness in. Pins all look nice and clean. There's a bruise on two sides. There's only one way to install it. Nice. Hey, can I borrow the radio for a second, Roger? Yeah. I want to see if I plug this in if it turns on. Hey, we have lights. Oh! Oh my gosh, I did all that and Roger moved the camera on him. I am, sorry guys. So cutting back for a second, because so I didn't watch Roger move the camera. We put the metal flange, mounting flange in. It just slides right in the slot. We have metal tabs that bend over that actually hold it in place. Pretty simple setup. And I plugged in the harness into the existing. We got my adapter harness to the radio and we have power. It's lit up. And I want some music. We'll see. Let's see if our broke busted up antenna actually works. I know the mice have chewed on it. I've never used one of these before. Why did mice chew on it? Let's see. I don't think that antenna is going to work. But like I said, I get this the Bluetooth side of things. So. We'll get it installed, finish installing. Just gonna tuck it, fold the harness up back in. And then we'll go about connecting up the Bluetooth side of it. Nice, that's in. So, pretty how simple we, how we install. Going? We're gonna Bluetooth to connect that to our phone, but our phone is what we're recording with. So, once, hey, hey don't touch it yet. So let's just try a couple things here. Not paired. So we got a microphone we can go to the phone with. We got AM, FM. Pretty cool. I mean, I don't know why for 55 bucks you wouldn't just go ahead and install radio. The problem with this and the reason why it's not functioning as an actual radio yet. Oh my gosh, T. Do not touch it for a few minutes. Well, Coming back. I like it up. So I don't know why. For 55 bucks, you would not want to just want to install one of these. The Kubota's already come wired for it. The plug's already in there. The antennas are in there. The reason my can't function as a straight radio is the previous owner broke off the antenna, 
The mouse is too on the antenna cable. And I need to replace that at some point. But I wanted it to Bluetooth connect to my phone so I can make calls on it. I can play music with the kids. We can do everything right with the phone. So for $55 and change for adapter and a Jensen radio, we'll put the links all below. So if you look below, we'll put the links for everything, including the marine water type, what splice connectors I use, everything. So you won't have me, won't take much. Cool project. What do you say, Roger? Let's have a party with this. All right, let's see if we can connect it to our phone. So hopefully, uh, the engine is not too loud to drown things out in here. We're back in the Kubota. It's like zero degrees out, so I got the tractor warming up. And we've installed the new Bluetooth-enabled radio. We've already showed you how to do the wiring harness adapter for it. I plugged it in, the radio turns on, operates normally, and looks beautiful. Then, I couldn't get sound. So, first stop, well, maybe there's something wrong with electrical because there was a mouse nest in this hole when we opened it up. So Roger and I opened it up and we had fun. This little psychic of mine. Hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> had fun chasing rats' nests up there. And that squirrel or whatever was in there that made that nest did actually chew on the wiring, but it was only for the lights. So we fixed all the spots up, got everything watertight. It was great. We pulled the top, fixed everything up underneath. So glad I got in there and fixed it. But that didn't fix our problem. So the next thing we did was, oh, factory speakers haven't been used. They gotta be great, right? So I requested a replacement radio from Amazon. Plugged it in, same deal. Everything works great on the radio, still no sound. So then uh, I'm doing a little quick research and Bruce gonna add the clip into this video. I pulled the factory speaker, tested it out with a battery. No movement, no sound. So now we have ordered new speakers and reading some of the reviews online, a guy that went through and tested a few different ones. He liked the Kicker series coaxial four inch ones that I found on Amazon that he liked. And so that's what we're gonna try using. Testing these guys with the battery out as the video clip earlier, they work great. So they are a drop in replacement for what's in behind here. I've already pulled the speaker out, but I gotta get the bezel out of the way. And I'm sorry, there's not very good filming options in here of me not being in the way of you guys seeing. But where are you? I gotta throw one of these speakers in. Let's see how things function. And our right hand man is doing a good job of not messing with things. Good job, boy. I know, but I will let you hold the camera later. But right now, we actually got to get it to actually record something, buddy. So, when you take the puzzle off, there's four mounting screw spots. So, we have the kicker speaker. On the kicker speaker is two blade type adapters, one small, one large. Can you step out of the film for a second, buddy? So we have a harness in here. It's pretty straightforward. It's universal. The small one goes on the small one, as you would figure. Well, it's gonna be my frozen fingers just being stiff. And then, large on large. Wow. And from the get-go, because the radio is actually plugged in. So anyhow, we're gonna mute that for a second. We'll throw this guy in. Can I have that bezel, buddy? I need that one put up in the ceiling, buddy. So the new kickers have a hole in the center for the fancy duties, fancy dancy speaker that it is. So we just gotta line up the four holes. Take the screws. Oh, the magnet will not stick. We'll line them up. Take the screwdriver. No, nope, these are good, so be careful with them. We don't want to lose it, buddy, all right? I do need it. Oh, don't poke holes in that one. I'll give you the broken one to play with at home, okay? So we need we have two speakers in this, buddy. There's one on each side. You've done really good to put up with Daddy. 
we're out here freezing for these speakers in. I probably, knowing me, I can't deal with things that are half broken, so I'm probably going to fix the antenna too so the regular radio station works as well, but it's down on the list of things to fix right away. So there's one of them. I'll get the second one in and then we'll see how the Bluetooth connection goes with playing a YouTube video or something. So I've been working on installing the cheap um, Kubota radio kit into our, our M6040 farm tracker and all the Kubotas come pre-wired for radio and they already have the speakers in them. And if you look, the quality of the speaker, it looks like some ports of it are made of the same material you'd see inside of a paper towel roll. So not the highest quality in the world. I have chased from putting my radio in and not making sound through checking the wires and circuits and the wires are great to now we're down to the last aspect, which is the speakers. And to show what a good speaker is, we have the new replacement. So that kind of tells you what that's going to be like. And Roger, can you put the battery out there for me? All right, hold it still. So all I'm doing is making a quick circuit. You can use paper clips. I just had some wire ends kicking around. And all these speakers have two spade terminals on them. One small, one large, it's to control the positive and negative circuitry. And that's a quick and easy way. Any battery from a AAA up through a nine volt can be used to test these speakers. And if you get a problem speaker, which we'll demonstrate with this guy, Ooh, you wanna hold that there for daddy? Put your finger on it? Thank you. There's nada. So a dead speaker is not gonna make any noise with any current pass through it. So that is just a AA battery. Works amazing on the functioning new speaker and the dead stock Kubota speaker, self-explanatory. So if you're trying to figure it out, that's a quick and easy way to rule out whether the speakers are working. So I forgot to say what we're replacing our speakers with. So there's a couple reviews done online where a guy took a few different series of speakers, put them in his Kubota tracker and tested them for sound quality and picked the best one for the price. And he decided on a kicker. So it's a coaxial speaker. All the stock Kubota tracker speakers are usually a four inch. The same exact screw pattern works. So it's just gonna be a drop and replacement. It's got the same exact size spade terminals, which is actually an industry standard. So everything is ready to plug and play and go right in. And we'll see how the sound quality goes. So it's a coaxial speaker. It's pretty simple, cheap, and affordable. And it's located right on Amazon. So we'll see the link below. So we're in the Kubota tractor. We'll get the radio installed. So we've used it for a while and it's all been holding up great. And we got the new kicker speakers installed. So we're just gonna go ahead and now that I have a second phone to record with, we're gonna go ahead and play something with a Bluetooth connection, which is what I use this for. So let's see. And this is a half volume. We bow down and worship now. Speakers work awesome. Bluetooth connections awesome. I wish I'd done this earlier last year when I was hanging, but it's gonna be great for this year. What'd you do to my radio, Roger? I took it out. What? How'd you take it out? With your tools. <laughs> tools. This is my tools. Yeah. Did you do it like an adult? <laughs> so I left Roger in the tractor for a few minutes, two minutes, many, apparently moving some equipment this morning, and he found my uh, radio pulling strips that you slide in to unlock the radio and yank the radio for me. And took it out. Took it out? What do you say we put it in and play some music while we feed cows? No, I guess. You guess? Alright, maybe? Alright, let's do this thing.